There are many areas of life where people interact with simulation software, like when you're playing a video game or learning to pilot a plane. But have you ever wondered how the people developing these technologies are able to make them so realistic? This week, Gadget Girl Carolyn has the answer. She's on location at McMaster University where she's testing out their latest and most advanced motion simulator. We've seen motion simulators in amusement parks and in video arcades, but we've never thought to put one in a classroom setting until now. Dr. Martin von Morenschild has implemented a motion simulator inside of his classroom for his software engineering students, and we're actually sitting inside of it right now. Now, Martin, how has this been utilized as a learning tool for your students? I mean, the first thing I like to say is people think university is not fun, and I think this, this <laughs> motion simulator is really the prime example that this is fun. Exactly. I mean, why do we have this motion simulator? I mean, quite often students in all about video gaming, so you're sitting in front of a screen and you get a picture. But this is not the full experience. If you want to have the full experience, you really have to fool more of your senses, not just the visual and the audio. You want to feel the, feel the sense of motion. Exactly. And that's why we have this entire contraption here. So now, all the research they're doing with the motion simulation technology, where are some of the applications going to be for it in the future? What we're really doing is, we are, I mean, what the technology is used for is to study how a human interacts with a, with a product. Quite often it is actually too dangerous to let a, um, a person do these kind of experiments. Let's think about driving a car on a highway with a high speed and changing a radio station or trying out some technology inside the car. You don't actually put the person in danger in order to test. To, to test this. Now here we can do this in a completely safe way and repeatedly. So right. we can put a different set of people inside the exactly same environments, exactly same situation mm -hmm. and measure very objectively of how they perform within these different situations. Now the results of how they perform are utilized to do what? Oh, you want to design new technology. So if you're driving in the fog, we would like to have something in the windshield which shows us the distance to the next car in front of us. Cool, because I know like it's really difficult to see in the fog and sometimes having an indication of telling you how far you are away from a car would be super helpful, especially for people who might have a little bit of sight impairment to begin with. So can you give us a quick overview about how this thing is built? So, so normally when you play video games you just get visual impressions and audio impressions. The right. key element of this is that you want to have the motion. So we're sitting on top of, um, of a construct down here which has six motors which allows us to move through the different degrees of freedom inside the space. So the six degrees, we're talking about three lateral, three rotational. The lateral is simple, your X, Y, Z coordinates, up, down, forward, backward, side to side. And then your rotational ones are all around the various axes of the object. So you can tilt left and right, you can tilt up and down, and you can turn left and right. Yeah. So this is a pretty cool platform to be yeah. on top of because it utilizes all six. And doing all of this with one metric ton. Yes, <laughs> this thing weighs quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Now, virtual reality is being utilized in manufacturing. How is it being utilized for training purposes? Pilots today are actually trained inside the virtual environment and can get a certification and then they go flying. There's a very interesting aspect of it and it's actually not easy to do that the virtual environment is so realistic that it qualifies you to act in the wow. real world. So they actually have to get inside this virtual world, be certified and then step into a plane. Training. Now, <laughs> this would be very interesting if this could be generalized for, for driving. I mean, why wouldn't you not be able to do a driver's license inside a virtual a car license. before you put anybody on the screen? And if the training is realistic, you could actually educate people and how dangerous it is to do it. So not yeah. only train them, but also give them the feeling of how bad such a situation feels. They'll never want to they, be in it. They never want to experience it. Yeah, exactly. So we've been sitting here on the edge for a long time and I'm just dying to get inside and try this thing out. Are we allowed to go in? Oh, no problem. I started up and we can go. All right, let's go. So Martin, that ride was a lot of fun. I truly felt like I was in this actual environment of driving the car. I felt the shaking. That's pretty intense. Yeah, I hope you don't feel too dizzy. <laughs> Just a little bit, but not too much. So you've seen how motion simulators are being utilized in the classroom setting for students and their learning purposes. But we've also seen how motion simulation is being utilized for future applications and various technologies. So for all you gamers out there who are dying to have one of these in your home, you never know. It might be in store for you in the future.